Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Sunday. It's a race that frankly doesn't get a lot of attention and should because let me just run a number by you here. Since 1988, three secretaries of state in Arizona have become governor. So your de facto lieutenant governor is sitting here today. It's going to be one of these two. On the right of your screen, Michelle Reagan, the Republican, just won the primary, a three, three-way primary, won it by 10 points. Opponents will go unnamed because I know it was very uncomfortable, that, that primary. Terry Goddard, who you are very familiar with, an attorney, served as the 24th Attorney General of Arizona, 2003 to 2011, mayor of Phoenix, ran for governor three times, lost all three times. Um, but between the two of you, you guys have been on a ballot 30 some times. <laughs> you had a bunch in the legislature, primaries in general, so you've had a bunch, I've city, a state. And, and presumably almost doesn't count for anything except in horseshoes. Right? <laughs> exactly. All right, let's start. Terry, let's start with you, uh, and we'll keep it informal. What do you see the role of Secretary of State? Obviously, you're the election guy, the main right. election person, whoever wins this race. And, and I think that's a critical role. Uh, that's, that's what matters uh, to voters in Arizona. And I'm running specifically because I think elections in Arizona are a mess. Uh, voters, uh, all of us, are becoming not participants, but spectators. And Are you I believe speaking the of independence specifically? No, I'm thinking of all of us, because if you look at the dark money flood that's come into Arizona, the anonymous corporate cash that's just sweeping through our elections, $5 million of dark money just in the primary this year, um, that is making us all spectators, because we don't know who's behind that money. We don't know what influence, what, what secret organization. Perhaps a corporation right here in the, in the valley is we'll trying get, to influence how we vote. That makes us a spectator, not a participant. We'll get into that because I know that's a big issue with you. And you got slimed by dark money in your primary. <laughs> Michelle Reagan, tell me how you view the job of Secretary of State. Secretary of State is a very interesting role in our, in our state. Um, if, you, if you think of Secretary of State as a big, think of the office as a big filing cabinet, if you will. And all of the records of the state are kept in that filing cabinet, business records, election records, records of all the agencies, um, what is being transmitted between the legislature and Congress. Everything traveling, basically record-wise, through the state goes through the Secretary of State's office. In addition, obviously overseeing the state's um, election system, a huge role. And then on top of that, we are one of only a handful of states that does not have a lieutenant governor. So you're also the de facto lieutenant governor. Exactly. It is a very, it's a huge office. And as you mentioned in your opening, so overlooked. So it is. I, I'm glad that uh, people are starting to wake up and really Arizonans watch this are race. catching on because they've seen it happen so many times. Exactly. Where, where the Secretary of State suddenly becomes a governor, and a lot of Arizonans, if they don't know the political players, they go, who? <laughs> right? Exactly. Okay. Let me ask you, I'm sure you get this when you're out running. Are you running because you want to run elections and the records of the state, or are you running because you are a heartbeat away from becoming the next governor? I've actually been waiting for this office and this role to open up for quite a while. So I'm excited to be running for Secretary of State. I always like to say I'm aiming for the seventh floor and not the ninth floor of the executive tower. Over my course of 12 years at the legislature, I have focused on two areas of law, and those two areas have been commerce and elections. I was chair of the Commerce Committee in the House for many years, and now in the Senate I've been the chair of the Elections Committee. And what I just mentioned to you about it being the big business filing system for the state and also the elections mm -hmm. office for the state, those are the two areas of law I've been most passionate about. Terry, for you, how do you, uh, I'm sure you've been asked this because you have run for governor three times, and I'm sure you've run into people out there going, ah, you <laughs> sly one, you're, you're going to figure out a way to backdoor this thing and end up in the, in the ninth floor. Uh, let me just put it in gambler's terms, John. <laughs> if, if you were to look at the odds, because it has happened a number of times, the chance that it will happen in the next four years is zero. Wait, wait a minute, uh, so but there remember is no in possibility. Vegas the dice have no memory. Every <laughs> roll is a new event. No, but it, uh, it, there, there are certain things that don't keep repeating, and, and, and I believe this is one of them. No, this is a very critical office, and I think the, the important thing is to focus on its election duties. It's not just a filing cabinet. I, I think that's, that's an unfortunate characterization because what we have in the Secretary of State is the chief elections official, the one who's responsible 
for for contributions, for uh, regulating lobbyists, for making sure that our system of government runs smoothly and fairly. And I think that is absolutely a, a critical component going forward because our elections are breaking down. People are being frozen out. We are 45th in the nation in voter participation and dropping like a rock. That is not a good record. And the Secretary of State needs to be the person who comes back, fights the dark money, drives it to the ground, makes sure that all contributions are transparent. Okay, with that well, being... If it, I want to be ahead, very clear. I didn't... Nobody is saying that it's just a filing cabinet. You, you asked what... What, what the, the role is mm -hmm. of Secretary of State. That is one of many roles, and I just I want to be clear about that. The Secretary of State's office is has many, many different functions. Do and you that see is, do you the see the elections it? component is by far the largest portion of what the Secretary of State's office does. It, it, it strikes but it's me also the first place that businesses come to when they come to open up shop in the state, and that is often overlooked and very Oh, critical. and get all their paperwork exactly. and everything. Do you see it as a partisan job? It should not be a partisan job. Absolutely not. Not when you're talking about elections. Elections Shouldn't are about be, people, is not it? parties. Shouldn't be, but is it, Terry, a partisan job? Well, it has job. become one. Uh, unfortunately, Why? Uh, the, the current incumbent uh, has uh, chaired a presidential campaign for Mitt Romney. Talking about Ken Bennett. gone into a, uh, frankly, a political sideshow trying to go after the president's uh, birth certificate in Hawaii. I mean, those are the kind of things that have to be driven out. I believe it absolutely. I You're agree. shaking your head. You agree with that? I agree with absolutely. Senator Ranch. So you think it became too politicized? To politicize the office. It really has got to be the fair arbiter of elections, the one who calls bar balls and strikes without any preference for a group because of lobbyists, because of partisan influence, for any other reason. Uh, I think one of the reasons that so many voters have lost confidence in our system is that they feel the, the fix is in. They feel that, in fact, they have not gotten a fair shake. And part of that is dark money. Part of it, frankly, is certain groups, certain voting groups, like independents, are not treated fairly, are not given the same advantages that Republicans and Democrats are. That's got to be changed. Let me get back to that. Do you agree that, that this should not be partisan? Once the election's over, you are the arbiter for the for that office and, and, and fair. Do you call, elections, it, call it as you see it? Elections should be fair and honest. And when you're talking about elections and when you're talking about filings and when you're talking about the, that is a, an administrative office. And that is, um, in some states, it's not an elected position. In some states, the, um, the legislative bodies appoint. come and appoint. Yeah, right. Um, we are, t yes, elections are about people. Elections are about, um, transparency and, and honesty and fairness. And I'm not going to cast stones and, and point at past secretaries of state. What I am going to say that it is very important to me that when you get up there, you behave in a fair and honest and ethical manner and stay out of campaign. Terry, Terry just mentioned that he thinks voter participation, we're 45th in the country. Do you share his view that voters are being, I don't want to use the term suppression, but um, what, what would be a better word for it? It's kind of a soft, um, I, I don't know, malaise when it comes to vote. What, what would it be? How would you describe it? Do you, do you see the acute problem that, that Terry does in terms of participation? We just saw it in our primary just a couple weeks ago. I mean, the primary numbers were less than that than it was t uh, two years ago. Or, you know, in the, in the last um, election cycle. that we had. That was a general election though. I mean that gets that feeds into a general election where people are much more engaged. No, no, she's strikes considering me. she's comparing primary to primary. Primary to primary. The last primary that we had of its kind, a statewide um, primary where we were where we were electing um, governor candidates and, and secretary of state candidates and the, the last um, non presidential okay. election year. Um, the numbers were down. What's this the year. reason? Let me ask you first. Apathy, Michelle. negativity. Um, partisan, People turned off. Absolutely, by, they're turned off. Were you turned off when you saw all those ads and all those mail pieces? Well, I mean, I'm I... in a unique situation because I'm a hostage uh, <laughs> out on the news set to all of these ads. I can't escape. You, I can't flip the remote. We watch the news. I would, I would watch the news, and it was seven minutes have, of news however, and 23 a, minutes of commercials. That's right. I have, however, become a connoisseur. <laughs> of these commercials. I, I've got a new special, Free John Hook. <laughs> That's right. He's a hostage, he I, needs to be released. Day 243, oh. it's unbelievable. It, it's, do, you, do you believe that pe people, voters? No, are I don't think it's malaise at all. I, I think what we have is a system that has a thumb, thumb on the scale, uh, that has made it very difficult for independents to, to vote, to participate. 
Uh, if you look at the last election, uh, the, uh, a year, uh, two years ago, 2012, uh, only 7% of all independents voted in the primary. If that was an ethnic minority, there would have been a Justice Department investigation the next day because it looks like discrimination. And I believe the Secretary of State has to be in there fighting for independence, getting rid of the obstacles that have kept independents from voting. And unfortunately, Senator Reagan has been the chairman of the Elections Committee in the Senate for four years. Okay, um, now those, we're going to start, now we're gonna start no, no, drawing I, I lines here comparison. That's fine. this is a legitimate That's fine. discussion because it is a bad situation. People have dropped away in record numbers. Independents feel like they're not part of the process, that they're being shoved aside. And, and that is the responsibility of state government to get them back engaged. Okay, go ahead. Do you want to come back at Terry on that one? <laughs> there has been massive efforts in the last two years to get independents engaged in voting. And um, notwithstanding anything from the Elections Committee in the Senate the past two years that I've been chairwoman. We've seen this from the county recorders. We've seen this from all 15 county election officials. We've seen this from the Secretary of State's office. Uh, nobody wants to see voter turnout go down. So you can read the newspaper just about every other day during election cycle and see all of the different efforts and programs that are out there to try to see voter turnout go up. It was very discouraging to see it go down. Um, one thing that I actually do agree with Mr. Goddard on is the fact that there are barriers to independence in requesting early ballots, in trying to get on permanent early voting list. There's an extra layer and an extra step in there that doesn't need to be there. Is that something that the Secretary of State could actually change or do you use the, I don't know how much of a bully pulpit that job is to be very some honest. I don't mean to demean the office but. Some of it needs to be changed legis legislatively. Some of it does not need to be changed legislatively. Some of it can be changed within the different um, county recorders jurisdiction. Um, that is one of the advantages that uh, I feel I have is that I've actually worked with all 15 county recorders and have relationships with them through the work that I've done on the, le and the, the legislature and working with them and, and being on the ground and in the field with them. We've got to take a break. Would anybody go on the record here and say, if elected, I think I could get voter participation statewide to a number? Would anybody be willing to try to do that? 200,000 additional voters. 200,000? What would that be in terms of a percentage? Um, 10 percent, 15, 20 percent almost. That's a and, and very they're, they're out there. We're 45th in the nation. We've fallen like a rock in terms of voter participation. People are not feeling affirmed in being part of this this process. And and the Secretary of State needs to be the one who changes that. Do you have a figure in mind that you think you could get it to? I don't have a figure in mind. I think it would be phenomenal if anybody could do that. And uh, what I would love to see happen, and what I would push for to happen as Secretary of State, would be to remove that barrier where independents have to sign up every time to be on, to request an early ballot. Either as a Democrat or a Republican. Correct. I would yeah. like to see where they can do what I do as a Republican and sign up one time and say, um, I, John Hook, as an mm -hmm. independent, would like to How get did you a, know? <laughs> I would like to receive a Republican early ballot so that I can vote for Michelle Reagan. Um, I would like to see receive a Republican early ballot each and every time until I say otherwise. I would like Just to set to up a system like that. Just to make it easier. Okay. So that that encourages turnout. We're John, this could have been done four years ago. Exactly. There's no reason why this has been sitting out there for so long, except that certain folks don't want independents voting at the same level. You believe that. Do you believe that? There's... Because independents tend to skew always, Republicans. There's always room for improvement. So again, the Elections Committee was created just two years ago, and it was created at my urging. So this was some, an issue that I became passionate about, and I asked, please, this is an area that's been overlooked. I was very proactive about it and asked the Senate President, set this up for me. I want to I wanna take it. I want to run with it. I want to make these changes. So um, changes don't happen like right. that. And we so, got to uh, we got to take a break. Uh, back with the candidates. We're back with the candidates for Secretary of State. Terry Goddard, Michelle Reagan back in a moment on Newsmaker Sunday. All right, I just asked the candidates uh, for Secretary of State for Arizona, Terry Goddard and Michelle Reagan. I got I got to give you both credit because usually unless you have well, you know this because you did it as governor. 
unless you have debates laid out and ground well, rules. He didn't and, do it as governor. <laughs> well, when you ran as governor. All these rules and all this stuff, it's nice that the Democrat, the Republican can sit side by side and talk this stuff out. Oh, I, yeah, I give you credit. A wall between us. So exactly. Nice. A wall or rules or anything. So I do appreciate that. Thank you for both doing it. Um, Terry Goddard, in terms of preparedness for governor, we pointed out at the top of the program, Secretary of State's become governor since 88, three times in Arizona. Should we have a lieutenant governor? This is a little out of the, this is a little off the grid. Yeah, it is off the grid because but, it doesn't, but you guys it doesn't are happen it. overnight. But you guys are it. Uh, it, 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 Arizona didn't think about that back in 1912. And, and why? Do you have any historical perspective yeah, why? Yeah, because we had a hugely long ticket in the old days. Uh, it's been shortened over the years, but we used to, in territorial times and in the early statehood, Arizona elected everybody. Uh, so from the dog catcher on up, okay. uh, it was an elected office. That was because early Arizonans, and I think it's still true, are very suspicious of government. They want to have as many controls and checks as they possibly can have. Um, Jan Brewer has suggested when she was Secretary of State that there should be a lieutenant governor with defined duties that runs jointly with the governor so that they have similar views. Mm -hmm. That's what other states have done. How do you it's view a good this, idea. How do you view this role? Because really, I'm sure that's what voters are really looking at. One of the things that, and I, I talked to um, people about this when I was first decided to run and when I was asking for endorsements and when I sat down and talked with Governor Brewer and, Governor, and Governor Hall right. um, and uh, that was one of the things they said, you know, what would you do if you woke up one day? <laughs> and, and I said, what did you do when you woke up one day and became governor? What was your answer to that, by the way? Their answer was, and it was very interesting, they said that um, you never can really be truly prepared for when something like that happens, but what got them through it was their legislative experience. And it was the experience that they had of walking the halls of the Capitol and knowing how to interact with lawmakers and knowing the legislative process. And they said, you know, Michelle, when you look at the majority of what the governor does most of the year, it's working with the legislature. And you already know that. You, you, you've you done it. You get that. Um, you know all the different agencies in government. You've done 12 different budgets. Um, that's the majority. So you're ready of, to go. Uh, right. And if it so, happens. It, and you would also know what type of team to assemble. And so as I thought about it, they, they said that was the hardest part. And I can't imagine somebody who hasn't been um, have that, having legislative experience um, waking up one day and being thrust into that role. I can't imagine how they Let would Let me survive. ask you, Terry, what's your preparedness? I mean, you've been around from, from city government to obviously attorney general. You, you've been around. You've been around politics a long time. So what makes you ready? I think it's a good thing. I think bottom line, that as mayor, you have to run a city, you have to balance a budget. As uh, attorney general, I had to conduct prosecutions, investigations, and run a staff of a thousand. Uh, so the bottom line is, you need to have hardened experience in executive work. Uh, I'm proud of my record. I'll put it up against anybody for getting the job done, saving the taxpayers money, and getting to the end with, with top scores. You know, I was picked the best, uh, the top attorney general in the country, and I'm very proud of that. Um, and focusing on the job itself, dark money is the number one problem in Arizona today. And what number needs, one problem. I think so. In terms You're of our elections, in terms of elections, in terms of elections, that's the thing that turns people off and it corrupts our elections process. How could you fix the it? The Secretary of State Secretary needs State. to be the point of the spear to get that fixed. To have absolute transparency in the system. Uh, I spent eight years as your Attorney General fighting against money laundering, and money launderers are the most sophisticated dark money operators in the world. They're the ones that are trying every way they possibly can. To hide, to hide yeah. the source of so the money. That's what dark money you is. You see a parallel. Absolutely, there's a parallel. You need to have that kind of focus and that kind of experience to go after the people that are trying to hide from the public, trying you, not to put their fingerprints on their efforts to control our collection. Michelle, you've talked about dark money as well, but is Absolutely. it is it experience this it kind firsthand. of firsthand? <laughs> exactly in your primary, is this a priority with you as it is with Terry, or would it be just so people can compare and contrast? Is it right at the top for you? Absolutely, it is. Especially after experiencing it firsthand, it you know it's um, you become a bystander in your own campaign. Is is what dark money turns can we can we into. get a quick thumbnail of what dark money is so that. I talked to Sean Noble about this at length on this program. Okay, <laughs> he's the master. But if people didn't catch that program, quick, people don't understand. Quick thumbnail definition of dark money. Dark money is anonymous spending. 
It's when somebody comes in or an entity comes in. They could be in state, out of state. But the key with dark is anonymous. You don't know who's spending it. Except this is money, mostly corporate money, that is trying to hide the fact that they are trying to influence the election. They're trying to buy our votes. Why do they hide? And they hide because they don't want to be disclosed. They hide because they don't want to have their shareholders or the public at large say, we don't want you interfering in our election. Or perhaps they're hiding because they know that their endorsement would be negative to the candidate they support. Should our public utilities be in this business? They should not. I should say, however, in Arizona, because we have had no legislation that has stopped dark money, we are the Cayman Islands for dark money. This is the state where John Noble is able to prosper. He's able to move $130 million, I believe, in the 2012 cycle of dark money, anonymous yes. cash throughout the country, polluting elections throughout America and here in the state of Arizona. We need to take a stand. Other states have done it. Arizona has failed to do it. Well, other states have done it and are trying it. Um, what holds up in court will be interesting t to watch. And that's one thing that I know I'm tracking and a lot of other people are tracking because this is a fairly new phenomenon, this dark money. Now, when I first introduced dark money legislation in the legislature, and let's keep in mind, dark money is a new thing for all of us. It's not like it has been around for a long time and we're just saying, oh, let's just um, start doing something about it now. Uh, is it a result, direct result from Citizens United? Yes, that's okay. what really opened the floodgates. And, and we do have very weak laws in Arizona, to be sure. Um, other states, most other states are trying to grapple with the same problem and saying, how do we close our laws and make them tighter? I Arizona take a needs to do that. I've got to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, I'm going to ask each of you what a vote for Terry Goddard is, as uh, Secretary of State means why somebody should do it, or for Michelle Reagan, the Republican. Thanks for uh, spending some time with us. We'll be back on Newsmaker Sunday with our two candidates for Secretary of State. Back on Newsmaker Sunday, Terry Goddard, the Democrat, running for Secretary of State. And on the right of your screen, Michelle Reagan, who was, uh, you were Scottsdale's lawmaker, either in the House or Senate from- Still am. Right, from 2003 yeah. till present day, right? Is that right. about right? Okay. Terry, uh, what would a vote for Terry Goddard as Secretary of State mean and contrast it with what you think you'd get from a Michelle Reagan, I Secretary of State? <laughs> okay, let me tell you very clearly. Uh, basically, I'm a prosecutor. Uh, I think what it takes to do the job of Secretary of State right now is to go after dark money, to find the sources of the dark money to, if, if the legislature won't act as they have not acted, they made us the Cayman Islands of dark money throughout the country, um, you need to take an initiative. And I intend to lead that initiative to go after dark money and to make it transparent. You also need to be absolutely fair. And it seems to me that the Secretary of State needs to make it so clear to the voters of Arizona that it doesn't matter whether you got a D, an R, or an I after your name, when you're on the voter rolls, you're going to be treated exactly the same. There cannot be any discrimination. There cannot be any favoritism. Unfortunately, Senator Reagan has been voted for one of the most discriminatory bills we've ever had, the right to discriminate bill in the last session. Uh, that's not the kind of dispassionate approach that we need in the Secretary of State today. We need not to, not to have any winners and losers, not to treat a particular group well or badly as her so-called uh, effort to reform me, election laws would have done. Let me give you a chance to respond. Wrong. Let me give you a chance to respond. Go ahead. A vote for Michelle Reagan for Secretary of State would be what? And a vote for Terry Goddard would be what, <laughs> in your view? A vote for Michelle Reagan would be a vote for free and fair elections. A, a vote for me would be someone with a lot of knowledge and a lot of passion for the elections arena. Um, again, the role of Secretary of State is, is twofold. And we, again, often overlook the big commerce aspect of the Secretary of State's role. I have extensive commerce experience, um, also have a lot of private sector experience before I ever entered the legislature in growing our family-owned business right on Central Avenue, still there today. Um, so adding that private sector experience to the, the 12 years I have at the Capitol in, main, in two main areas of law, economic law and election law, and that is exactly what the Secretary of State's office does. And um, transparency. Transparency is so incredibly important as the bedrock of our um, election system. And I would um, think that a, uh, where I di di disagree and, and um, have a difference of opinion with Mr. Goddard is 
when we're talking about elections, some of this nefarious activity that we see with ballot collection, um, ballot harvesting, where individuals can go into polls and turn in thousands of ballots at one time. It's activities that we don't see in any other state allowed. I've got to leave it there. Those are the kinds of things and that I'm I opposed to. Oppose, I, 